Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Margaret Ellis Raymond and I'm an author and I was born with tricuspid atresia. This series of videos is to thank all mothers of CHD children. The human side of congenital heart conditions is often buried by the medical. I hope this series of videos brings comfort and answers. If you enjoy, please subscribe as that helps me reach more people who might benefit from this content. Happy Mother's Day. Hi, Jen. It's nice to meet you. Hi, it's nice to meet you too. Um, thank you so much for joining me in this interview for Mother's Day. And um, your case, your story was um, very particular and I thought it would be wonderful to interview you to give uh, CHD moms out there and um, well, yeah, CHD moms and moms of children who have children with uh, CHD conditions um, a chance to, to get your perspective. Well, I'm happy to do it. So um, first thing is, could you just describe uh, your son's condition a little bit? Okay, so my son has a condition called truncus arteriosus, and what that is, is in a normal heart, there are two arteries that carry blood from the heart. There's the pulmonary artery, which carries uh, deoxygenated blood from the heart to the lungs to get oxygen, and then there's the aorta, which takes the oxygenated blood that comes back to the heart, sends it out to the rest of the body. In my son's case, those two arteries were fused together. So the surgery that he needed required separating the two of them so that he had a separate or a, uh, aorta and pulmonary artery. And then um, since the pulmonary artery is supposed to be connected to the right ventricle, they had to put in an artificial conduit to connect it. Oh, okay. He has, he had some complications as he was recovering from his surgery, and he actually had to have a second surgery that they didn't expect because he had um, malformations of his coronary arteries. Um, so they actually had to do a second surgery to go in and repair one of the quarter, coronary arteries because it was getting compressed in times of stress. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he ended up having to have a second surgery. He had some he had some brain bleeding as well. So that's led to a whole host of other complications. He has some some visual impairment. He wears glasses. Um, he has hearing loss in one ear. Um, and he also has cerebral palsy, so he has significant developmental delays. Cerebral palsy is ca caused by brain injury, either before birth or during birth or shortly after birth. Um, in his case, uh, he had some brain bleeding that was discovered about when he was about two weeks old, and he had to be on a lot of anticoagulants after his prior to his second surgery, and he also spent some time on ECMO. So that actually made it worse and caused some brain damage because some of the brain tissue was starved of oxygen and died. So that's what led to the diagnosis of cerebral palsy. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so you are, you, you adopted him. How, could you tell me a little bit about how you heard about him and, and what prompted you to go ahead with the adoption? Well, my husband and I had been looking to adopt for quite a while. And um, one day we were contacted by our adoption agency and they told us that this woman had just had a baby. Uh, she really wanted us to adopt him, but that he had this heart defect. So she told us what the heart defect was called and we did a little bit of research as to what that looked like, what, you know, what sort of treatment he was going to need. Um, we talk, We were able to talk to one of the cardiologists that was working on his case a little bit more about this particular defect and what this was going to mean for him. You know, the more we talked about it, the more we realized that that this kid needed us. I mean, his birth mother basically left the hospital after he was born and just left him there, and he didn't have anybody. Right. So, you know, but the more my husband and I talked about it, the more we realized that this little guy needed us. So 
we did have an opportunity to meet his birth mother. They had been at the agency had been in contact with her, um, even though she left the hospital and everything, but we had a chance to meet her and then we got a chance to go see, see the baby. Um, at the time we met him, he was six days old. Um, yeah, he was, he was very, he was very small, the smallest baby I'd ever seen. He, he had a breathing tube. So that was a little bit, a little bit surprising, but just looking down at him, I fell in love with him right away. So had he had surgeries at that point when you met him or no, they were not yet. Uh, not yet. They were trying to, they were trying to hold off on the surgery as long as they could, as they usually do. Um, but he had his surgery when he was 11 days old. Okay. So and about five after that. Okay. And so, um, sorry, hold on a second. My phone is buzzing and making noise. Um, so, so you met him and then 11 days after he was born, he had his surgery um at that point were you kind of thinking about doing the paperwork for adopting or was the paperwork kind of starting the process how how did the timing work out when we when we met him and decided that we were going to move forward the birth mother signed the consent to allow us to adopt um it was actually about uh it was actually not too long after his surgery that we uh, that we signed the paperwork saying that we were going to adopt him. Now we were, that didn't finalize the adoption, that just said that we were going to, you know, take, that he was being placed with us and we were going to care for him. Mm -hmm. um, we did have the opportunity if we wanted to, to, to back out. We just got attached to him really quickly. So at the, I couldn't think of anything that would have, wanted it, that would have prompted us to back out even though there were times when his health was not as good you know at when he um i mentioned that he spent some time on ecmo so he was six weeks old when he when he went into cardiac arrest and um after that it became really clear that there were going to be some other issues like he had to, he ended up having to get a g-tube okay. um and so, you know, we had plenty of opportunity. They kept saying, you know, if you don't want to take on a child with special needs, you can back out. But we were just so attached at that point that we were not going to back out. We weren't going to leave him again. Yeah. And so through this process, you end up adopting him. What, what, not only are you adopting somebody who has special needs, but also a heart condition, but are, um, you, you're basically opened up to both of those worlds. What were some of the, the resources that you were able to find and that helped you? Um, well, of course, there's always Facebook groups. Yeah. Um, I'm part of several Facebook groups for heart conditions, for cerebral palsy, um, a local group for uh, parents that have kids with feeding tubes. Mm -hmm. So uh, those are always good resources. There's a local, a local group in my town specifically for families of kids with heart defects. So there's people in that group that I've gotten close to and you know I can reach out to them if, if we have questions. They have social events where the families can get together. So I've connected with other heart families that way. That's great. Um, yeah, so basically, and you know, there's the clinic that we go to for a lot of his specialist appointments has um, has a social worker. So, it, you know, if we ever needed resources, I would be able to contact somebody there. Um, and also, all of his uh, therapists, he gets occupational therapy, speech therapy, feeding therapy, and physical therapy. So the therapists are all really great, and they know of other resources to help as well. Yeah. That's great. What's the adoption process like for a child who has um, special needs and and a, a, a specific condition? Is it different? Um, I, you might not have adopted in addition, so I know you, you only have your experience, but it, do you know if it's different? Um, I think in some cases it takes a little bit longer. I know that with my adoption, it, with the adoption agency that I was working with specifically, um, it took a little bit longer because 
they just, you know, they just wanted to check, check up on us more frequently to make sure that we were doing okay. And that he was being well taken care of. And, you know, in addition, in my case, there were all, it was also delayed quite significantly because in the middle of the process, my husband passed away. So that, you know, that delayed things even further. Um, but other than that, it probably wouldn't have been, it probably wouldn't have been too different except that they were checking in on us more often. Okay. Did it change your motivation with adopting or? Um, no. I mean, if he, I thought about it like this, if um, at the time of my husband's passing, my son was nine months old. If he had been, and they did come to me and say, you know, if you can't, if you don't feel like you can do this by yourself, you can still back out because we still haven't finalized yet. Mm -hmm. But the way I thought about it is that, you know, he, I had been in his life his entire nine months and he needed that stability, especially if, especially with all of this upheaval in his life, he needed that stability. Yeah. And had he been my biological child, it wouldn't have even have been a question. Right, right. At no time did I, did I think about, you know, I can't do this. I, you know, we need to find somebody else for him. It was just, now I'm in this situation. How am I going to do it? Right. It was not a question of if, it was a question of how. So can you tell me um, how it is being a single mom with a child with a heart condition and cerebral palsy? Well, being a single mom, in, even to a healthy child, is difficult. Um, in my case, I think it's even more difficult just because, you know, kids with, particularly with his special needs require a lot of care. Right. Um, so I've had to reach, I've definitely had to reach out and find some people to help there. Um, you know, there are people in the neighborhood who have volunteered to help if I need someone to help me with chores or to watch him for a little bit. Um, my church has actually also been a really big source of support. Um, there, there's a woman at my church who babysits my son regularly when I have things to do. So, and I taught her about all of his care, all of the medications that he gets, how to do his feeds. Mm. And, you know, she loves him just as much as if he were her own grandchild. Yeah. So being a single mom, the, the thing you need the most, when, whether your child is healthy or not, is just support. Yeah. And if I didn't have the support of people in my church, my neighborhood, and my family also, my parents live in another state, but they come, try to come and visit about once a month. And, you know, they, it, they get to spend time with their grandchild. And it also gives me a little bit of a break because they know how to do his feeds. They, they're willing to play with him and keep him entertained. So it gives me a chance to kind of relax. So um, definitely, definitely I have a lot of support and I don't, I don't know that I could do this without the support that I have. He's how old now? He just turned two. Oh my goodness. <laughs> how, what has the process been like? I keep saying process. <laughs> what has um, his life been like up until now? Um, well, he's definitely, as I mentioned, he has significant development delays. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's not, he doesn't, he hasn't, can't do a lot of the things that your typical two-year-old can do. Like he can't, he can't walk. He doesn't talk, but you know, his life other than that has just been so full of love and he's, he's so happy all of the time. Yeah. Um, he doesn't, he doesn't know that he's different. He doesn't right. know what, what he, what a typical kid his age can do. Exactly. He just knows that he's in a house full of love and has a lot of family who loves him and you know he he doesn't know any different and he just is so full of joy and he oh. brings so much joy to my life too yeah what is a couple of things that throughout having him in your life that you've learned so I've, I know that when I ask my parents this question they tell me that they learned patience because of my heart condition and what I went through, what, what have you found that you've learned through having him in your life? Well, I would say patience is also something, I mean, I used to be a teacher, so I had a lot of patience anyway, yeah. but 
you know, I had to have a different kind of patience, especially work dealing with doctors, dealing with so keeping so many specialist appointments straight and having things changed, um, with, um, dealing with insurance companies. That's a big one that I've had to learn a lot of patience with. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to go into it, but anybody no. who has, a, yeah, anybody who has a medical need knows how difficult insurance companies can be. Yeah. Um, but also I've just, you know, I've just learned that every kid, every kid is special. And even if your kid has special needs that they can still have a full and happy life and their disability doesn't need to hold them back. Right. It doesn't define who they are. Exactly. Yeah. What would you want to say to other moms out there who might be looking at adopting a child with um, a very specific condition? What, what would you want to share with them? Don't let their condition necessarily be a barrier. You, I mean, you never know how things are going to turn out. Um, when we decided to adopt my son, we had no idea that he was going to have special needs or that things were going to be difficult. Um, but even so, if you, you know, I, I get, I get joy out of knowing that I've given him the best life that he can possibly have. Yeah. And so I would just say that if you're thinking about adopting a kid with special needs, realize that it's going to be difficult, but it's probably going to be the most rewarding thing you've ever done. Well, thank you so much. It was so nice for you to meet with me and answer some questions and help those in the um, CHD community and also the cerebral palsy community um, hear your story. So thank you so much and happy Mother's Day. Oh, thank you for having me. I was glad to be a part of it. Alrighty. And Have happy Mother's Day to all the other moms out there. All right. Bye. Bye.